Hey, welcome back to 65 Drums. My name is Justin. So today's video is gonna be a quick follow-up to my main review of the e -drum in from Audiofront. This is just gonna be a smaller, quicker, less fancy video, talking about a couple of points that I missed and I didn't really mention in the video, and also some information I didn't know until after I made that full review. Go check that other video out though, if you haven't seen it yet, because it gives you the full information about this. Today's video is just gonna be some odds and ends that I wanna explain a little bit more in depth that I didn't really get a chance to in the main video. Okay, so the first thing I wanna talk about is the fact that this is a trigger interface. This is essentially like a Roland TM2, like a small drum module that doesn't have any internal sounds inside of it. But obviously in my main review, I was playing to sounds somehow. So where, where was I getting the sounds from? What program, what, how was I doing all that? Basically, this is doing all the processing of my drumming, and then it sends MIDI information to my laptop. Inside of my laptop, I can use whatever kind of sounds that I want. So in my main review video, I was using Easy Drummer 2. There's certain people that will find this very, very useful and other people that just, it won't be for them. For me personally, if I'm playing live, I would rather use a drum module because I wanna have internal sounds to fall back on in case something goes awry with my laptop. However, some people don't care about that sort of thing and they just want something that's cheaper than a drum module and maybe that's why they would go something like this. The reason why trigger interfaces are kind of sought after by some drummers, not everybody, the reason why some people like them is just because they're cheaper. The people that make trigger interfaces don't have to go and pay somebody to go painstakingly record hundreds of different drums and cymbals and put them into the drum module. They don't have to go and license different sounds or whatever. So that's the reason why some people like to buy trigger interfaces because they're cheaper than drum modules in most cases. Okay, so another thing that I wanna talk about, which was in the original review and then somehow it got cut out during the editing process, I usually record like gigabytes of talking footage and then whittle it down from three hours down to 15 minutes. So some stuff gets left on the editing table. Because this thing only has four inputs, that makes this an add-on device. It's essentially for three different kinds of drummers that I can personally think of. The first kind of drummer that might find this useful is somebody who doesn't need many pads in the first place. So for example, if you're a hybrid drummer, you mostly play acoustic, but you have a couple of electronic pads. If you don't wanna have a big fat drum module and you want something really tiny that you can attach to a cymbal stand and forget it's even there and just run sounds from Ableton or whatever, this might be a good choice, especially if you wanna have a couple pads just to advance tracks and then a, a cowbell sound or uh, like an EDM snare sound. This is great for that sort of thing. You can split this and so you could essentially get eight different pads that are single zone. The second kind of drummer that might find this useful is somebody who wants to expand their drum set. So let's take the Roland TD-11 KV as a hypothetical example. That thing only has so many inputs. You can only plug in so many extra toms and cymbals and you run out of room. Well, this lets you plug in an extra two toms, an extra two cymbals, or if you wanna have like four crash cymbals, you could definitely do that with this device. It's like an add-on device in case you don't wanna buy a second Roland TD-11 module. And then finally, the third person that might find this useful is someone, and let's say you have a TD-11 again, let's say that you wanna start using pads that aren't compatible with your drum module. There's plenty of pads out there that don't work with every kind of drum module on the market. So let's say you wanted to start using three zone Yamaha style uh, cymbals. Well, with your Roland TD-11, you might get two or maybe one zone working, but you won't get the full capabilities of that pad because it's not built for that module. This will let you start using pads from different companies that wouldn't normally work with your setup. So it's an add-on module. I have talked to the company asking if they're going to make a larger version, something with like, I don't know, 12 inputs, something like that. And they said they don't have any plans for it, but I would assume that if this ends up selling well, they might eventually do it in the future. But as of right now, the company says this is what they're sticking with. The next thing I wanna talk about is overall latency. So in my video, I was talking about you gotta make sure you need to have decent computer hardware in order to run this setup. And that wasn't quite, it didn't come across the way it should have because this is doing all the processing inside the box. So any sort of latency problems that you're having are almost 100% not the fault of this device. It's basically your settings on your computer and whatever kind of hardware that you're using. You gotta make sure you got good hardware to run the drum plugin that you have, but you're not really getting that much latency from this, this device right here because all it's doing is processing your playing and then sending that as MIDI information to your computer and then your computer deals with that. That program that you download for your computer, eDrum In, where you can change different settings and optimize your pads, that's not actually doing any of the processing. All the processing has been done in here and your program just changes some of the settings. It's basically the screen that doesn't exist on this little box. They put it on the computer basically to save space and it's easier to update it because it's on your computer and you don't have to thumb drive over 
uh, updates whenever they have a new feature or something like that. And you can actually close out the program because every five seconds, the eDrumin saves your settings and everything is saved. You don't need to actually have the program open in the background. I should probably also mention that the eDrumin has full iOS app support. So you can actually plug this device straight into an iPad or an iPhone. The reason why I didn't make a dedicated part of my review about that is I don't have an iPhone or an iPad. I'm an Android guy at the moment, uh, so I couldn't really make a full segment of the review on that. It's a really cool feature though. You just have to go buy one of those adapters and then you can plug it straight into your iOS device. And then finally, the last thing I wanna talk about, which I forgot to mention at the end of my video, was the fact that if you wanna have more inputs than are available on this device, but you wanna have some of the functionality that the software has inside of this device, well, they actually sell some software separate that will let you turn an audio interface into a trigger interface. So if you have one that's really large, that has like, I don't know, 12 inputs or something, you could essentially replace a drum module just by buying their $40 piece of software. That will then let you plug in all your drum pads directly into the microphone or line inputs of this trigger of this audio interface and turn it into a trigger interface. I don't know if I'm explaining that quite right, but it's basically a cheaper way to do it if you already happen to have that hardware lying around. This is still cool though, because of how compact it is. So if you want something that's really, really small and compact and can fit on a cymbal stand, this can be your go-to thing if you need something that only has a couple of inputs. If you want something a lot larger and you still don't care about having internal sounds, you could just buy their uh, drum software that turns your audio interface into a trigger interface. Haven't tested that yet, but I do wanna try it sometime in the future. Okay, so that's the video. I didn't wanna make something super long and overly production heavy this time. Just wanted to clarify a couple of things and add some new information that I learned after making the full review. Big shout out to you for watching all the way to the end though. Really do appreciate it. Have an amazing day and I'll see you all in a few.